Hello my friends, a very good morning, may God bless you all in the name of the Lord Jesus and your respective family members. May the Holy Spirit open your understanding, set free your understanding of each of you so that everyone may understand his word and put it in practice with courage and faith, courage to put it in practice. When Jesus said, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. This is glorious. This is glorious. Glorious. I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser who takes care of the vine. This is glorious. Then he says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, the branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. He removes. But the one that bears fruit, even if the fruit is a bit spoiled, but it bears fruit. It's a spoiled fruit, but it gives fruit, meaning the branch is alive because it gives fruit. Isn't it? Every branch which bears fruit, even if it's small, he prunes, meaning he, the father, the vine dresser, prunes it that it may bear more fruit. But the, fruit, the branch that is in me and bears no fruit, he takes away because it's useless and it's thrown away then it goes to the fire where it burns. Then, ahead, you continue reading the scripture there in John chapter 15. It's good for you to read carefully with much care. You will read verse 5. Jesus says, I am the vine. You are the branches. He is speaking to the branches in general. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Here he already says. In the first scripture he says, He who is in me and does not bear fruit, he removes. And the one who gives fruit, he doesn't say much. He just says those who bear fruit will be pruned to give more fruit. But in verse 5, he says, I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, look and pay attention that he gives a condition, a condition. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire. Then he says, If you abide in me, see not again, if, if this, then that. If you abide in me, and you don't bear fruit, he removes. The Father himself does the job of cleaning to remove. But if you are in him and you bear fruit, then he prunes you to produce more fruit. 
because this is the work of the vine dresser to care of his plantation, of his vine. The father takes care of his son, of the one who is in his son. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire. Jesus said you will ask. You will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Meaning, those who are in Jesus, those who are in Jesus have the privilege to ask whatever and they will be answered. But those who are not can ask whatever they wish because they won't be answered because they are not in Him. So, my friend, you who are watching or listening to us this moment, what does this suggest? It suggests that you need to evaluate yourself, to examine yourself. And as you eat of the bread and drink of the cup, or don't eat of the bread and drink of the cup, so each one needs to judge himself for himself. And if you feel offended because we speak in this manner, in fact, I'm just blowing the trumpet, saying what Jesus said, repeating the words of Jesus. It's not my thoughts. It's not my thoughts, my ideas, my heart. Here we have a scripture, a biblical scripture, words of Jesus. If you read in English, French, Hebrew, if you read it in any language, you will see the same scripture, the same words, the words of Jesus. So you who are Christians, evaluate your life. The fruit which many Christians, so-called Christians give, are filthy fruits which embarrass the name of the Lord Jesus, which does not sanctify the name of the Lord Jesus. But they are people who go to churches. They are religious. They are loyal to their respective pastors, denominations, their religions, but shame. For not being connected to the vine who is Jesus, they are connected to the churches, the institutions, but not in the true vine who is the Lord Jesus. So these people live a bad life in regards to those who give fruits because those who give fruits are beautiful. Those who don't are not beautiful. Yes or no? You might have already observed this. Any fruitful tree, you will see that they are a fruitful tree which give that beautiful fruit which makes your mouth to drool. But there are also those trees which are fruitful which only have fruits which are eaten by animals, they are filthy. You understand, they are fruit which are not easily taken advantage of. And they even try to use pesticides because of the insects. So, my friend, I'm not here pointing fingers at anyone. And I hope that no one points fingers at me. I am just speaking what is written. And you and I and each of us need to examine yourself, to evaluate if the fruits which we give are for the glory of God, to sanctify the Lord Jesus, or to sanctify our glory. If it's for our glory, then these fruits are filthy. 
rotten, but if it's for the glory of the Most High Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then you can be at peace with your conscience, you can be at peace with God, you can be at peace with those who are also of God. All right, tomorrow we'll return. Tomorrow we meet again in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, don't forget, tomorrow, Wednesday, the night of the soul, we will be working, fighting that those who say, Bishop, I need salvation. I know I'm not saved. I know if I die today, I won't go to heaven. I know I'll go to hell. That's the reality. I'm not sure of my salvation. So tomorrow, come with this desire to save your soul because we're going to fight to work, to unite our faith for you to be saved and have the assurance of your salvation. God bless you until until then. In the name of the Lord Jesus, amen.